right, well, we're up here on the hill um, where the shack is. You can see these lines going down straight towards town. Um, there's about a mile and a half that we of land that we have for this. So the lines come up. So these lines ter terminate in here, coming in and Okay, so what, what's our setup here? So the feed, the original feed line comes in from a, a cell link that's mounted up high outside. It leads into this uh, Wi-Fi access point, which is essentially uh, it's a 3D enclosure, 3D printed enclosure for uh, one of those little cell phone data only Wi-Fi plans. Uh, that data runs through to this uh, data logger, which is essentially a Raspberry Pi modified to run on 12 to 20 volt solar, uh, which makes it appropriate for our stuff. Uh, it also has to have separate power supplies to power some of the other equipment we have. For example, the uh, the uh, cell phone MiFi requires, uh, I believe, 12 volts to operate. And uh, in order to get that feed, I had to have a second supply that's uh, power or Ethernet that supplies the MiFi. <coughs> In addition to that, there's a third power supply in here that is a 12 to 24 volt converter that provides the uh, voltage that's necessary to run the 37 Bravo, which is the actual audio, the actual line recording equipment. Uh, that 1400 foot antenna field comes all the way across those towers and eventually comes through some filtering systems uh, and leads in right here, which leads into the input of the 37 Bravo. This is an audio audio line test equipment. And uh, what it's normally made for doing, it's normally made for testing noise and minimizing interference on the original POTS telephone network. In this case, we're actually looking for the noise, so it makes the perfect system for amplifying that type of thing. Uh, so this takes the raw signals that are on that line, amplifies them to a, re to a region that we can pick them up, goes through what is essentially audio output down the feed, and re leads into the audio input junction on the data logger. The audio input is it's essentially a sound card that's mounted onto the Raspberry Pi. And uh, essentially all the, a lot of the work and development is not so much in the uh, hardware itself. It's relatively simple Raspberry Pi people put it together, besides the power. Uh, but the much larger issue is this is a, this is a Linux-based PC that's sitting in a shack in the middle of nowhere in the Nevada desert. So you have to make sure that uh, everything is very battle-hardened, resilient, uh, uh, handles reboots, can allow to be maintained remotely, uh, and continually streams external over to the internet to our server where you can actually listen to it yourself. Uh, this whole system at the moment is running on uh, battery power, on a 12 volt battery pack. Eventually you want to hook this up to one of the solar panels on the roof. So essentially this entire feed, the data logger, the cell phone, the iFi, the 37 Bravo, can all operate independently as one powered unit. And it could conceivably run this system 24-7 uh, without, uh, without stopping. And uh, that would fit some of our longer goals, which is once we start getting the signals recorded and analyzed and start picking apart the signals from the noise, we'll get a better understanding of what we're dealing with and we might be able to start making forecasts. Uh, in addition to that, uh, a lot of the work in development is just getting the physical design and infrastructure in place. So the really good news is that now that we have a functioning system, it's exceptionally easy to uh, make copies of it and start putting up multiple stations in other locations across the planet or across the country at first. Uh, I just happen to have the 37 Bravo is the ideal for this. The sound that you hear, which you hear there's a, a low frequency buzz, which is essentially the power line noise from the nearby town. And then you hear this little crackling sound, it's like that popcorn crackling. Uh, that crackling sound that you're hearing is 
uh, all of the lightning activity on the planet at the moment. So this is actually a global receiving device, which makes it really interesting. And uh, for the research and development purposes, this uh, it's essentially listening to the ionosphere. And whenever there's issues that happen, both in the in the sky for solar activity as well as within the Earth, causes changes to to the way these signals interact and operate. So. I can see, for, for example, what might happen before a large seismic event is these crackles might get more, uh, more densely packed and louder and, and closer together. So instead of hearing these little pops and cracks here and there, that meter might be pegged all the way top and you hear a, a continuous rush, a roar of constant uh, high power activity going on. But uh, I haven't seen that yet, so I believe that was Eric's uh, observations for his previous stations in the 90s. Not yeah, sure if it was and, any, and anybody can go to uh, ericpdollar.com, just search uh, keyword landers for the blog posts. That was Pictures, you. whatever, it's all, it's all in there along with the, the charts. Yeah. And Eric's research originally was he had chart recorders and things that were taking these types of measurements. And uh, he had correlated some changes in ionospheric activity with uh, seismic events that were occurring both locally in California and across the world. So now that we have a more modern system set up, we can record much higher quality audio. We can record the live feed directly from the source, have it stored and analyzed at our leisure. So when something does happen, uh, we're prepared. We can go back in time, we can listen to the recordings. We can see how the signals changed, and uh, a couple good seismic events might allow us to calibrate this equipment. And uh, in the relatively near future, as in maybe within a few years from now, we could start making uh, reliable and accurate forecasts. So, sky's the limit. <laughs>